Okay, how many people here read The Devil Wears Prada? A lot of people. It was horrible, wasn't it? Well, that was my personal opinion, because for me, when I read that book, I didn't recognize any of the people in it. I mean, for me, the wonderful thing about fashion is that it sort of is a great place for all these oddballs and eccentrics and basically unemployable, kooky, quirky people. That was, oh, that was my, the fashion landscape for me it was composed of those types of people. So these sort of careerist, crazed bimbos who are in that book, I didn't recognize. Anyway, it's a personal thing, you know, like I'm sure you loved it, didn't you, madam? You read it, loved it, right. So Marcel Toff, Lauren Weisberger, it was a huge hit, hello. So anyway, about two years after it came out, I got this phone call and this woman said, hello, I'm a casting director and we're making a motion picture of The Devil Wears Prada and we wanted you to come in and audition for the part of Nigel. So instantly, all my disdain for the book melted away like so much Velveeta melted away and I said good heavens of course I'd love to and I made an appointment to go in the next morning and, and meet with this casting director and I hung up the phone and I picked up my little dog Liberace Norwich Terrier and I said to him we are going to claw our way to the top this is incredible I'm going to be in a movie starring opposite Meryl Streep can you believe um, now, did I have any misgivings about being able to act, right? Movie acting? Hello. Anyone could do that. No offense, Meryl, or, you know, George, Nicole, if you're in there, any thespians here, but I mean, really? I mean, doing King Lear one night and Othello the next, hello, that's... But movie acting, you just have to stand there and blurt it out, and if you screw it up, you do it... Anyway, so no, I didn't have any misgivings about being able to movie act. The one misgiving I had was from my little understanding of the book, Nigel was that sort of genre of helpful homo. You know, the helpful homo. And I'm just not that helpful. In fact, I give absolutely appalling advice. Like, I give very reckless advice. People always come to me and ask me for like, what shall I do? And I say, just buy a blue stripper wig and paint your face green. And I give just horrible advice. So I thought I'm gonna to have to work on being helpful because I know that character Nigel was very helpful. So I'm all keyed up. I can already hear popping champagne corks and Klieg lights the premiere because I'm gonna go in and meet with this casting director. And I call my dad in Brighton, my 82 year old dad. And I said, you're never gonna believe this. I'm auditioning for a film opposite Meryl Streep, blah, blah, blah. And there was a pause and he said, boy, they're really scraping the barrel if they're calling you. <laughs> like, and I remembered he'd always been the wind beneath my wings, old <laughs> Terry Doonan. So I show up, I show up for the, for the casting and I do this great like pastiche of a gay fashionista beyond and the casting director comes screaming towards me she said you are incredible you're going to come back meet the director she handed me the script that i had post-its in it of all nigel's lines so i thought oh my god i have popping champagne corks limos flying up and down the street this is really happening so i went home and started trying to learn the lines and which was more complicated than i thought because and what, any thespians here might verify this. The long bits that seemed quite complicated were actually very easy to learn. It was the short bits, like, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> and not today, thank you. Like, those were much harder, and I kept fucking those up, and I kept thinking, now I know why Marilyn Monroe, you know, they had to do 52 takes of her saying, yes, it's me, sugar. And she kept screwing it up. So I a bit of empathy there for Marilyn. But I got through it, I went back to meet with the director, spewed my lines with incredible panache, and he said to me, you're amazing. And I said, I know. And he said, you're incredible, blah, blah, blah. And then he said to me, so tell me, what, what's Anna Winter really like? 
And I said, well, she's nothing like that character in the movie. Anna's very hardworking, very straightforward, very well liked by her employees, an incredible mother. Like, she's a different character altogether. And I should have smelled a rat then because he completely glazed over. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm leaving the casting office and I ran into Philip Block, fashion stylist, personality on TV. And he said to me, I'm um, auditioning for the role of Nigel. And I looked at him like, I will cut you if you take my role. And I thought, he's never going to get it. He's not English. Nigel's English. So then the next morning, I'm out walking Liberace. And I ran into um, Robert Verdi, another TV person. And he said to me, oh, yeah, I'm auditioning for the part of Nigel. <laughs> and uh, Liberace took a poop and looked at me, like gave me a look, like, you've been had. <laughs> and as I dropped the poop into the receptacle at the end of the block, I realized that we, we, these Telly Nellies, had been, we were part of some carefully orchestrated bit of free research for some Hollywood actor that was going to get the role. So two days later, they announced that Stanley Tucci would be playing the part of Nigel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why you're all cheering. It's so great about that. So anyway, um, because I'm a very forgiving person, I decided I must move on. But you know, the weird thing, when the premiere came around, no tickets were forthcoming, despite the massive contribution I'd made to the development of the role of Nigel. But I thought, you know, what would Anna do? She would just, you know, pick up a Chanel bag, put on the shades, and move on graciously with life. And, you know, that, that's what I'm, I'm doing. I'm letting go. I'm moving on. My resentment is gone. I've, I've let go completely. Thank you.